just religious activities and also political activities to find a place in the Middle East. So the Jews came to this actually area a thousand years ago. And obviously a, a new religion is a threat for the rulers, for the for the country itself. So as the rest of the groups, the Jews were forced to leave their major center, which is Egypt, the city of Egypt, Cairo, and they moved to the north, which means the mountains of Lebanon, they became the center of the Druze religion from the 12th century up until today. Um, so the Carmel area, the Galilee area, Golan Heights, in Israel we have, uh, we have the smallest Druze community in the Middle East, close to 150,000. A larger Jewish community you will find in Lebanon, approximately 300,000 Jews. And you'd be surprised, the largest Jewish community in the Middle East, it's in Syria, close to 600,000. We don't have really the exact number, but it is actually the largest. We have also a few thousand in Jordan, and some Jews in the States, North, North America, South America, Europe. Altogether, the Jews are not more than one million and a half members. But again, mainly here in the Middle East. Now, again, mountains, picking up the mountains, because the Jews try to avoid majorities. I mean, we try to keep our secret faith. So we found the mountain as a safe and secure place to live in. So that's why actually the Jews try to move away from majorities, not to be in the center of things. But it is part of the Jews' a, a, a strategy to keep a low profile, because we understood it's not easy and it's so difficult to begin a new idea especially when we have a lot of groups around. Uh, if we don't have, want to speak directly, we can speak about the uh, Egyptians and the Muslims ruling, that they don't believe that there should be any other religions after them. So the Jews came 400 years after the Islam, like 11th century. So not just moving to the mountains, but to keep a low profile, I will ask you a question, see if I can get the answer. Anyone can name me or give me the name of the Druze praying house. We pray in such a place. It has a name. Can you think about it? No chance. Well, it's not a mosque because we're not part of Islam. It's not church because we're not part of Christianity. And it's not a synagogue because, again, we're not a branch of Judaism. Now, a, if you take a look to your left side, you can see a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. I mean, Christians and Jews were accepted because they are former groups. And you can see it from miles. Now, if you take a look to the right side, you're going to see that white house over there. This is where we pray, that oh, yeah. modest and regular house that you see over there. That, the two windows? Right yeah, the yeah, two windows? Yeah. yeah, that's one of the one of the rooms actually house of worship here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that oh. house, but again, it doesn't look like anything yeah. else. Just and that's the idea behind it. That again, to keep low profile, you do not emphasize the differences between you and the majority in other. I'm not talking about nowadays that I live in Israel and I'm part of the state of Israel. I'm talking especially about the Uthman Empire. You know, the third the Uthman, right. they ruled over the Middle East over the, for exactly 400 years. And they didn't recognize any small or large groups. For example, if you guys will visit the Baha'i Gardens, I mean, Tomorrow. the Baha'i religion. It's 150 years old. The founder of the religion was executed by the, the, by the Uthman in Tehran in 1850. And I mean, we're talking about like really short area. So the Druze came thousand years ago and they understood <laughs> that this is the Middle East. You want to survive, keep low profile, avoid maturity, and try to look like others. And that's how the Druze actually did survive. So the Middle East. Yeah, we call them in Arabic Khilwa. Khilwa came from the word empty, modest, it's like the most modest. modest house in the village. Mm -hmm. And again, as I told you, it looks exactly like any other house. Now, there is another great story about this house of worship, and that's actually part of the Druze religion. It's like a personal story. I haven't been in this house of worship since the age of 14, and I cannot go there. I'm a Druze, my parents are religious, I belong to the family, but when I was 14 years old, I chose not to follow all the rules to be a full member and learn the secret, and I chose not. So since that time, I cannot go inside, 
I don't have the holy books, and I cannot take any part of the religious ceremonies right now. I do have the right to become a religious man in any age, any time I wish to, but it's not an easy thing because you have to go through a testing period for a couple months uh, to follow all the rules. But the idea behind it that we say in Hebrew, there's a wise saying called Derech Eretz Kadmala Torah, which means values comes before God. So before you learn the secrets of God, first you have to behave right. Keep high values in your daily life. Keep your body healthy. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't drink alcohol. Uh, food restrictions that you have to follow. But that's fine with me. But also they want you not to enjoy life too much. <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's my problem. <laughs> You know, no girls, no nights club, no discotheques. So basically, you know, certain modesty that you have to follow, and then you can be a full member and learn the secrets of the Guru's religion. So Ob obviously, obviously, yeah. <laughs> Until the age of 15, you can come freely here, oh. come to the house of worship, get the basic, learn what is God all about. But after the age of 15, that's the, the age that you, you're changing, you're switching from childhood to adult one. Mm -hmm. And your responsibility, it's like an adult, so you have to follow all the rules. Like for men, also you have to shave your hair, grow mustache, white hat, special uniform. Women, they have to go with white cover, as you saw. I mean, the whole family are all religious, by the way. They cook and they, they, they babies that they're working here. Again, modesty. And again, no smoking, no drinking, you know, keeping really certain values, uh, and then they're allowed to study the secrets of the religion. But the good thing here, it's, it, nobody will push you to become one. It, it must be a free choice. If you don't feel that this is right for you, you don't have to. If you're too busy, I mean, yeah, it's okay, you still live here, you belong to the community, and you can take part of whatever, but you cannot go to the house of worship and learn the secrets of it. Now, most of the young people are not religious, by the way. I mean, young people, they do work outside, they travel. Also, there is another thing that Jews young people, when they're done with high school, they have to serve in the Israeli army. This is actually, we follow the law, the Israeli law from 1956. Our young people, they have to serve in the army, and it's not easy to maintain a religious lifestyle and also be a servant in the army. So most of the young people are not. They don't leave, I like you guys. Our kids will stay with us, they will get married and they will establish family inside the village, inside the community. Very few people will leave for a bit. So they will practice their own lifestyle. But listen to that, this is really special. <clears throat> Between the age of 40 and 70, almost 100% people will change and they will become religious people. Even me, I mean, my chances are really high. I mean, well, I still have 20 more years to, to finish. <laughs> Ask for an extension. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a tour guide. He's doing a mission. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the problem with the gray hair. You know? <laughs> but no. I mean, that's the thing. Now, two main reasons. It's a status here. When you become a religious man or woman, people will hold a lot of respect to you. You know, you're giving a lot of things, and you're kind of a spiritual leader. So people actually give, give you that, that respect. Second reason, and this is something really special, guys, listen up. Carefully, Jews begin to think about the next life. And according to the Jews religion, death is not the end. We believe death is the end of our material body, but it's not the end of our internet soul. So we do believe that when a person dies, his body will fall apart as a material, but the soul, the energy, it will always travel from a dead body to a newborn baby. You guys call it reincarnation. Mm -hmm. So for us, this is like a normal and a basic thing that the true space based on. Because why we believe in reincarnation, why we believe that everyone is getting more than one chance, because we believe that one of our main goals it is to try to understand God and to get close to God. I mean, it's a similar religion. We believe in one power, one energy, one God, but for us, God is also the stage of perfection. And He created us because He wants us to get, try as much as possible to understand this concept. So if you live once 
I mean, your chances are really close to zero to understand this major concept. So you must experience a lot of circles, and not just experience a different a circle, like once you'll be poor, once you'll be rich, but it's a development of the mind that the soul is passing in experience, and what we learn in this life, it will help you in the next one. And this is like stage by stage, we are learning more, maybe we're getting more answers to questions, maybe we're getting more cures to diseases, but that's the point that we are improving. So. To believe, to believe in God, reincarnation is completing that idea. To reach God, you have to get more than one chance. And that's actually one of the major principles that the Blue's faith based on. And it's a little bit different from what is in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. If you believe, you always come back. So people, again, begin to think about the next life. And if you die as a religious man or woman with a clean conscience, you are improving your chances to be born in a better condition. So that's why almost everybody want to die uh, as a religious man or woman uh, when they do. Do, do people, do you always keep, re you know, recycling? Recycling. I mean, is there a point yeah. where you 